My name is Sirius Voice. I'm based in New York City, and the name of my company is James Media. Hey, it's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, this one is so easy to do because I've known Sirius and her husband for so long and have seen their progression from back when she was at the New York Post to back when, you know, Christian hip hop or Christian rap, whatever you want to call it, was, you know, somewhat purer than what it is right now. Serious Voice is in the house all the way from New York. And I know you guys will say, hey, I see her. She's in Atlanta sometimes. She's in L.A. That's because she's full time with what she does. And she's still, still rapping, still trying to give an uplifting spirit, still praising God. But one thing about Serious is she is serious. So she doesn't have a watered down message. It's real and it's real talk. So Serious Voice, welcome to the show. How are you doing, my friend? I'm excellent. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming on. And, you know, let's talk about first your TV show and the different markets and everything and how people can tap in or request it if it's not in their market. Excellent. It's called um, Success Stories with Serious Voice. I'm the executive producer and host. Um, my husband, Mr. C, also executive produces, and it's a collaborative effort between my company, James Media, and More Beats. And, and for those that have been following me for a number of years, you know that I always talk about Mr. L, a.k.a. More Beats. Um, we've always collaborated on musical projects, on film projects, on, you know, anything creative, we've, we've collaborated. We just, it's kind of like Timbaland and Missy Elliott. That's our little relationship. Um, and it works. It just works. Um, but, you know, I'm excited because what we do is we highlight the successes of individuals in the black and brown community. You know, people that are interesting to us, people that are doing something amazing. You know, they might not have a famous name, but they're, they're within the community and they're doing things that the average person can attain um, or aspire to if they were to follow a certain path. And so we like to find those type of folks and just um, shed light on what they're doing. All right. So things have gone, you know, from a pure, uh, um, a pure faith based to now we're saying faith based and community activism. How was that transition? Because, you know, in Christian, in the Christian world, People say, oh, we're all the same. Everything is equal. God loves us all. But here you are, you know, originally from Jamrock, Jamaica, uh, in New York, thrived, you know, gone to some great schools, married, children, all the, all the stuff. You know, it's a great story that movies are made out of. But then when do you say, oh, hold on, let me talk about this community activism, because a lot of Christians, you would say, no, don't talk about that. You know, we're all just one. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I'm a Christian woman. I love God with all my heart. And as, as they would say, I'm, I'm Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, all of that great stuff. But when, when um, George Floyd happened, when Brianna uh, Taylor happened, um, uh, I believe that's her last name, when Ahmaud Aubrey happened, when all of these incidents happened, um, with individuals that look like me, it kind of struck me. And, and I couldn't just watch the news story and change the channel. It hit me to the point where I had to go to the studio and I had to record, you know, the SOS uh, 2020 remix. Um, I had to go and, and record Black Woman because it was an incident, a personal incident where I got into an elevator in a Fortune 500 company in the heart of New York City and a Caucasian gentleman's in the elevator with me, the door is closed, he turns around and he says, well, what do you do here? And instead of me reacting, you know, the way that most people would react, and there's nothing wrong with anyone's reaction, I said, you know what, I'm just gonna smile and then go home and write about this because I feel like the best way to express myself and to respond to him would be through a song. Because if I were to tell him about himself, then we, the doors would open, he'd call the police, and it, it would just turn into something 
um, unnecessary. And so um, I couldn't just be a Christian woman and just hear about all these things, see, you know, the stories, um, hear of the, 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 the accounts firsthand from different people, you know, as a media professional and not do anything with the giftings that I have, with the platforms that I have. It's just impossible. And I believe that if Christ was here today and he knew a George Floyd or knew a Brianna, he would say, hold up, this is not right. So Ooh. as a Christian person, I love everybody. I love Asians. I love white folks. I love, you know, everyone. And I just felt like as a Christian person, I need to just exhibit love and talk about this in a way where people could respond to it. They could relate to it. Um, I felt like I could have been a Brianna because, you know, I'm a homeowner and someone could have just shot up my house, you know, like, and, and, and it, it just, it's something that's, how do I even explain this? It just makes you feel unsafe as a black woman, as an American, it just makes you feel unsafe. And so I had to do something about it. For other people, they could just go about their merry way. Oh, it's another black person. They got killed. But it's it's beyond just being a Christian. Being a Christian is not just reciting John 3.16 or praying for someone. Okay, what's the next step? After you've prayed, after you've fasted, after you've talked to the pastor, you've done all this stuff, you got to do something. And I, I, went, I actually joined a couple of peaceful protests in New York City, and I have pictures on my social media to prove. I mean, you know, I have some of the sunburn to prove as well. So I didn't just record a song, but I actually went out there and spoke to people. And I said, this could have been me. What's going to happen if I'm the one that gets shot up in my house and there's no real explanation for it? Nobody's held accountable for it. So I had to just take my Christianity to another step. Now, I said all of that. The person who doesn't do what I've done, does that mean that they're less of a Christian? No. It just means that this is where I am. This is where God has me in my life. I feel like it's, it's beyond just scripture going to church we've got to actually do something and so that's what i've been doing well and you know that something used to be okay we're going to have a vigil we're going to march we're going to do all these things but those things at least in this country are not working so you know with you making those changes how much pushback did you get you know because we always talk about pushback from the outside but inside you know, was your, your husband, was he on the same page? And then what were your other, you know, folks in ministry at your church and those you do music with and, and create, were they on the same wavelength or did you have to drop off a couple of friends? Oh, another great question. Um, for the most part, the Christian hip hop community did not support, you know, you know, my actions and, 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 um, the music, the political, the, 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 um, the songs that I released that, that were, you know, if you will, you want to call it anti-police, um, but it's not anti-police. It's anti-bad behavior, um, anti-murder for no apparent reason. So, um, and I don't want to seem, you know, angry, but, but, you know, like there are millions of black people that are, they're like, they've got their arms up like, okay, is there a point where somebody's gonna say, okay, we're gonna stop killing black people, we're gonna change our strategy, this and that is gonna happen. The Christian hip hop community did not support black women, did not support SOS. And so what has happened is a lot of people in mainstream hip hop have caught on. I've had mainstream hip hop magazines pick up my music and they write reviews on the songs that I've been releasing. Um, so with that, my fan base has grown. So even though they haven't supported, my fan base has grown and it's actually helped me more. Now here's more people who aren't safe getting exposed to my Christian hip hop music. So am I upset? No, I'm actually happy because I'm doing what I feel led to do and God is blessing and he's opening doors and more people are listening to what I have to say. How critical do you think the Christian uh, music scene is on women because you didn't just change you know some of the things you're talking about but you know throughout the years that i've known you you've changed your your weight 
you know, you've gotten in extreme shape, you've changed her hairstyle. And sometimes women can be judged on every single thing, especially black women, because of the, you know, curves that you can put black women, white women on the news, same outfit, one is going to go viral. The other one is, oh, it was just Becky in a white dress. So how critical do you think you know, Christian music or even um, the church has been towards you on every change that you make. And has it been for the good or for the bad? Um, they're, they're, well, to be honest, the church, I belong to a local ministry called Bread of Life. They've been super supportive. Um, I've never gotten any kind of, you know, pushback. They've been, I, I, I couldn't have, um, you know, been, been more pleased with the support that I get from my home church. Now, the, the music, the, the, the religious community is a completely different story. I've had people come on my social media and tell me, go back to Africa. I've had people, you know, block me, do all kinds of report my, my Instagram and all of my other social media accounts because I released a, a music video for the SOS song with uh, an actor that played a police officer. And in the music video, the police officer beats me up and I've got this bloody face and people are like, they think it's the real, well, it's happened to a lot of people, but the way we depicted it, it was, it was done so real that it upset people. But why aren't they upset with what happened to George Floyd or Brianna or all these other people, you know, but they're upset at me because I do a music video. <laughs> I can tell you why they're not upset because it's not <laughs> worth their peace. And the majority of the community or communities that don't have to deal with that are at peace when they see, you know, poor people. And that's what all the, most of these victims are. They're, you know, poor people at being attacked. So that's not worth their peace. That's what my therapist tells me all the time. You know, what, what is that argument even worth your peace? And it's, and, and it's not. So why would they get upset when it doesn't impact their brothers, their fathers? But the same way, many black folks aren't bothered you know, to do something, they'll complain all day in the barbershops, at the bar, at family reunions. But what are you doing? And we're not talking about marching, but, you know, you said go back to Africa. What a beautiful place it is. I'm, I'm Mr. Africa. You know, um, it's a beautiful place where geo arbitrage is real. So you could go to back to Jamaica or you could pick 54 countries to go to in, you know, Africa. But that, that's not a, a, a diss anymore. It's like, okay, you pay the way. I'm there tomorrow. First class ticket, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I've, I've been to Africa. I've been to, I've been to Johannesburg, to South Africa. Um, and I love, I love Africa. I love the place, but I wasn't born there. And you know where I was born. I was born in the Caribbean. And, and I, you know... Um, trek to the U.S. when I was five years old. But, you know, that's besides the point. So that's where people want to take it, but it hasn't slowed me down. It hasn't stopped me one bit. You know, you, like you mentioned, changing my look. I think as a creative, you have to evolve. I'm no longer creating music for teenagers. Like I create music for grown people, for, for grown women, for grown men. And so the, the topics that I address are things that affect us to a certain degree. Yes, I like to have fun, but I, I'm not going to be in a studio trying to create, you know, a song for a dance, you know, unless I feel like this is really going to gonna amount to something. So, you know, I've evolved as an artist, you know, um, I think I do a lot more reactive music, a lot of things that are going on in our country. I tend to write about that. And it's just where I am as a as a individual. Um, and I do more collaborating. You know, I think I think that helps when you can collaborate with different people um, from different you know disciplines. So it's it's worked out thus far. Talk about the TV show. I know that you know you're in multiple cities, and you know public access being very beneficial to you. And so how has the TV push been and, you know, what can people do if you're not in their city? Is there a way for them to request to say, hey, I want this channel in my city? Yes. Um, well, first of all, they can go to our website, Success Stories uh, SV, um, 
dot com. That's successstoriessv.com. You can hit the contact button and send us a message and say, hey, I live in Connecticut. Um, I want to get you guys on there. And what would happen is you can then become our um, liaison in that particular area. And so when we do reach out to the local uh, channel, um, you'll be one of the, the, the contacts. But on that website that I mentioned, the show's website, we also have the, the various uh, markets that we're in. Right now, people can tune in in Buffalo. Um, and we have, that's over uh, 100,000 homes on Apollo TV. That's uh, Spectrum Channel 1302. They can tune in in Atlanta, Georgia on People TV on Comcast 24. Uh, in Brooklyn, New York on Brick, which is very popular. We've just been renewed for a, a second season, so that's great. Uh, the show airs um, four times a week on Brick. We're also on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. It, it airs every Friday at 1030 in the morning. And it's been doing super well to the point where we have um, people in different places and streaming services that, you know, have been in talks with us about getting it on there. So the, the traction that it's gotten with um, the community access has sort of generated this buzz. And also our social media presence has generated this kind of a buzz where we're looking to actually launch to that, that next uh, platform that's outside of, um, you know, the, 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 um, local community access uh, channels. Now, people will hear this and say, wow, community access, um, you know, folks who know will say, hey, you can't sell ads on there. For somebody who has a vision to do, you know, media, um, they're probably looking at you say, serious, how can I make money off that? Or how do you make money off that? Or if I become your community liaison, can I make money off of that? So can you answer to the money? Because we love to show how folks start it, sustain, and succeed in their business and their models. Well, there are other things that you can do with your show. If you're starting with community access, you can do hosting. I've uh, hosted, recently I hosted a film festival um, and I did red carpet interviews. So people will hire you. They see that you have that visibility um, across the country or wherever you are and you're popular. They can hire you to host an event. You can broadcast live at one of their events. You know, your show can actually set up and broadcast live. I think that people need to stop letting um, these, these little things um, hinder them from making money because you can broadcast on YouTube and make money. <laughs> um, you can just go virtual, you can stream, you can do podcasting and get ads that way. I think that the best thing to start with is to perfect your brand, make sure you're putting out quality um, interviews, quality video content. And once you have that quality and people see it and you're branding yourself in a certain way, in a, in a sort of top notch way, people are more likely to reach out to you and say, hey, I'd like, I'd like to sponsor you. Um, can you come to one of my events? Can you MC this? So there are so many different ways um, to make money with a show, even though you're not, you can't uh, sell products um, on your community access show. Man, you threw me back when you said top notch, because uh, you knew me when the company was under a different name. And that, <laughs> was, the, that was the name. I was like, oh, man. Um, <laughs> so... So I, I love that because we, we just want to give hope and inspire people. You know, none of us got here like this. It wasn't a, a magic. It was hard work, faith, and a whole bunch of, you know, prayer and more work and right. more prayer right. and more work. And it just doesn't stop even when you get knocked down. Talking about being knocked down, I know that when COVID hit, you know, People got cut from jobs. You had a great job, um, you know, at the Post in New York. How did that feel to be like told during a pandemic when you need a job the most, you know, in your thoughts, at least, that's what you're used to, that your job has been cut and there's a pandemic, like, and that bounce back, P walk people down that path because not everyone was able to bounce back yet. Right. I think that it's shocking for everyone. I, I don't think anyone's expecting that. So one, it was shocking. And two, 
it sort of ignited the entrepreneur in me. And for those that are watching, I want you to know that every time something negative happened, you shouldn't just sit around and cry. You need to say, well, what's the positive that I can take out of this? And for me, it was, I was already an entrepreneur. I just started to do more. And I started to sell myself more. And I started to, and, and actually there were certain um, creative things that I used to do back in the day, you know, that I said, okay, you know what? I want to start doing this again. And I want to offer certain services. And the craziest thing happened. A lot of people started reaching out to me and saying, hey, um, are you still doing PR? Could you do PR for me? You know, I just released a book. Could you get me some interviews? And at first I was a bit, you know, apprehensive and I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. But then I looked at the fact that I wasn't, um, you know, employed and I needed employment and I, we all have bills to pay. And I said, OK, you know what? I'll take on this task. And sure enough, I was landing interviews for my clients on terrestrial radio stations, um, you know, locally on Hot 97, on, um, you know, 107.5 uh, and all of these stations and, and whatnot. And it's just, you've got to have drive and you've got to be confident about who you are because there's so many people that were fur furloughed, laid off, fired, et cetera. And they said, oh, my, my world is just came crashing in and I don't know what I'm going to do. Use what you have. We all have certain skill set that other people do not have. And people are willing to pay you for that, for those things that you can do. Um, and so for me, it's communication. You know, it's, it's the relationships that I've built over the years with, with certain people in media. And I was able to tap into that to get um, exposure for my clients. You know, it's writing. Um, I went to school and, and obviously we had to write and they teach you how to write well. And so <laughs> being able to do that put money in my pocket. But if I had said, oh, man, I don't have a job right now with this big company. What am I going to do? Woe is me. And I just kept crying and, you know, just eating and watching Netflix. Then there would be no talk show. There would be no no PR, you know, arm um, in what we do. So and there wouldn't be a number of other things that came out of that. And, you know, PR is one of those things that I think anybody can say they can do it. But the real hard part is to have continual paying clients, you know, that pay you to do it. You know, that's the hardest part. You can train a 13 year old right now to, hey, this is what PR is. But to have somebody write that check and somebody may be listening to this right now and say, you know what, um, I want to write a check. And, you know, uh, Kellen has sent me some exuberant <laughs> amount of money that he wants for me to do PR. But I'm a PR professional and consultant who loves others who do that because there's plenty of work for everybody. So give folks listening who are looking for, you know, help in that arena, um, you know, you said placements, but where should they be budget wise before they try to hit you up and say, hey, serious voice, I got the greatest idea and I got a hundred bucks to my name. <laughs> well, First of all, if all they've got is $100, I would say take that $100 and invest it in a photo shoot, invest it in polishing up your website, invest it in, you know, certain things like that. Um, you've got to have a few thousand dollars if you're looking to get good publicity. Like it's not cheap. And so that's the reason why we keep seeing, um, you know, certain people on TV and others who you, we all love you know, not on TV is because the ones that are on there, they, they're paying these professional PR folks um, to get them on there. And, and, and a lot of these PR folks have solid relationships and you're paying for relationships that you can't, a person cannot get that relationship overnight. Um, you know, the person that books the Tamron Hall show, it's either you know them or you don't. And so if you're a newbie and you're saying, oh, I want to get on there, you know, you've got to have some money. Um, and so I would say, you know, they, they should definitely save uh, maybe around five, six thousand dollars um, and look at a long term investment. You know, so maybe six to ten and you're saying, OK, I have a new project where I just released a book and I'm looking to get publicity. And the problem with that is when the person contacts you, Kellen, 
They're looking for something to happen immediately. But what they don't know is it takes several days, several weeks. It takes pitching, repitching, reworking, you know, contacting the assistant of the assistant. It takes a lot to get that one response. And then when you do, they might say, well, you have a new book, but we don't want to talk about the book. We want to talk about what's happening right now. We want to talk about a current event. Can your client talk about, you know, the stock market? And then we'll get into that, that financial freedom book that they've written. And so you've got to be able to be, you know, um, be able to shift um, in that manner. But I, I think a hundred dollars is something that if, if that's all they've got, um, and I don't want to insult anyone, if that's all you've got, um, use it to better yourself and better your brand. So you can you can use that to to get a better flyer, use that to update the website if someone will volunteer, because a hundred dollars really cannot um, pay for a website. <laughs> well, they can go on Fiverr and get all those services for five dollars. But even if they have, you know, um, 500, let's just say, because you guys see how she laughs at you, Mr. Hundred Dollars. I've known uh, artists who actually think, well, I'm used to having my own publicist and they're paying like $50 a month. And it's like, do you not want your publicist to eat? Very selfish, right? And right. You, know, you know some of these people that I'm talking about. And, and we, we're not here to badmouth anyone because you are where you're at. But now that you know, people should understand from your story that you're telling, you know, have five or six thousand dollars. So if they have five or six thousand um, dollars, you know, saved up or maybe even two thousand, who knows what can they get and for how long? I tell people straight out, you, you call me and say you got six thousand dollars, you know, and want some serious work done. You have like a month and a half of our time. Because of what we do, we're not, you know, I'd rather be playing pool than just dealing with like prima donnas taking their last. I want people to understand that we've, we've got to a point where, you know, you're paying us like you would almost pay your lawyer unless we do a, a special deal. But, you know, if they have that 6000 how long can they, you know, have your services for and what could they expect? I would, I would, I would, if it's a first time person, I would work with them for two months. And, but I would want, before they sign off on a contract, I would want them to do their own research. I would want them to look at the different websites, you know, uh, radio stations, TV networks um, that are interviewing people like them with their sort of um, product and then come back to me. So when you come to us, you're coming with the knowledge of, okay, these are the type of entities that will actually entertain my brand. So they're sort of coming with an idea of where they should be. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're coming with a sense of what they would like to happen throughout that period. And also the most important thing is what are you going to do as a client to help the PR company do the best job possible? Are you going to furnish the, the, the materials that I need in a, in a, in, you know, quickly, or is it going to take a month to get that stuff to me? You know, are you going to answer my questions, you know, uh, uh, within 15 minutes or within, I would say a reasonable, maybe an hour or two, or does it take several attempts to reach you? And then you're like, well, why didn't this interview happen? It didn't happen because you were sleeping. Uh, you didn't respond to <laughs> the, the company that you hired. <laughs> to represent you and now you want things to be done overnight. It doesn't work that way. Man, talk that talk and you know, I, I, I love it to hear it because people just they don't get it. And sometimes even us when we bring on you know other companies, I, I don't want to I, I'm probably the worst to take money from because I'm like, I don't want to do it. That's why I'm paying you. You know, I don't I don't want to do any research. I don't want to give you the talking points. I'll give you everything else because give you one email and then maybe it's not a good fit if you really don't get it. But um, that's, that's me just being straight up and honest. So what can we expect? It is summertime going in, you know, then we'll hit back to school. What can we expect from James media? Well, first of all, we can expect a musical project. 
and it's called Beautiful, and that's going to be released in early September. So right, right around Labor Day time, you're going to have an amazing project with myself and a plethora. When I say a plethora, I mean a bunch of women um, on this particular project, and I think we've, we've, we've outdone ourselves. Um, and there's a song on there called Hear Me Roar with about seven women um, women from all over the country, women with different styles of rapping, singing, etc. And we're just saying, listen, I'm a Christian, hear me roar. I'm not changing for you. Another young woman is saying, um, you know, this is where I am in life. Don't try to come and change me. So we're, we're all um, operating in different disciplines. Um, we have a different um, idea of what it is to be a Christian, um, a different idea of what it is to be a woman. Uh, in 20, <laughs> 2021. Um, and I think it's it's an amazing uh, track and the whole project is just dope. And of course, uh, it's inspiring as well. It's not just hip hop, but it's it's Christian hip hop. Um, you know, it's it's aspirational, it's motivational. Uh, everything that, that we need right now in this post COVID, post George Floyd era. Now, for those who know me, you know, she said what it means to be a woman, because those <laughs> things change all the time. And we could go there, but I'm not going to go there, because I want you to go check out all of the links in the description box, listen to this music, watch the show, and then, you know, Sears and I will go off air, we can talk like that. But I don't want you guys to be all over the place and, you know, mix this up for anything else, because it's not about bashing. It's about lifting you up so you can get to where you need to get. Whether you're a woman, man, black, white, Asian, Latino, that doesn't bother my life. What would make me the most happy is that you got something from our guest, Serious Voice, to take your life to the next level no matter where you're at. So Serious, I have to ask you my signature question before signing off. And it's, what does your community give back? that you are doing or that you want to do in the future? Um, my husband and I, uh, we don't talk about this and we've never talked about this publicly, but we tend to give away scholarships to college bound students. And so, you know, we'll give them a check privately. But my desire is very soon to work with a local college to uh, instate a, whether it be a serious voice scholarship fund, but something. It might have my name, it might not have my name. Uh, it might have my, my government name. Um, <laughs> um, but, but that's something that we want to make public very soon because we do care about you know, the next generation. We do care about giving back. And, and it's usually a young person in the black and brown community um, that comes out of a single parent home, or they might have both parents, but they're still not able to, you know, fund that young person's education and they need the community to, to help to support them. And so that's something that we tend to do. Uh, and this is probably the first time that I'm mentioning it. I don't want everybody calling me right now and inboxing me. <laughs> could I, could I um, nominate my cousin from so-and-so or you know what I'm saying, for, for this scholarship, we find the young people. Um, and generally it's, you know, sometimes people that we know or associates, but it's not folks that we're related to at all in no shape or form. Um, but that's something that we do want to take public very soon. Well, I'll tell you, we, gave, we give scholarships out as well um, through our CNA to MV.com platform. And, the, uh, and I'll tell you, if you put like, you have to write an essay or fill this out, you'd be surprised. Even your family won't fill out a simple essay and it's, it gets the people who really want it, especially we're, we're doing it for, you know, folks who it's for everyone, but especially for the people going to medical school, because we know how tough it is when you're getting paid minimum wage, when you're supposed to be saving lives. And especially if you're in a big city, but you know, you put a little essay or say, Hey, you got to, do this, people will fall off and they won't bother you because a lot of folks who, you know, they want their handout, they want something quick, quick gratification. You want me to actually work and prove to you that I'm worthy and what I would do with the money, you know, because I went to an HBCU. I also went to a private uh, Christian school. 
in Kansas, Ottawa University, what's up? I saw the same reckless spending at every school I went to of, you know, Sally May loans. And I even had reckless spending. But woo, when I paid that final payment of Sally May and I was done, thank God. And that's all I can say. I was alive to make the payment. Thank God for that and a great wife that, you know, said, don't file asylum in Africa. <laughs> Just pay Sally May back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't file. So I, I love that. Do you want to leave the people with anything before we sign off and take this off air? I just want to say that, um, and this is something that my my um, my pastor has been preaching, and she's been saying, you know, instead of us complaining about what COVID has taken from us, we should look at what COVID has given us and the liberties that we have because of COVID. And so, you know, if you lost your job. Um, and you don't know what to do, look at your giftings, look at what you have in your hands, look at what you're capable of doing, because those things will enable you to make money if you truly apply yourself. So that's what I want to leave with you guys. Feel free to reach out to me, not for the scholarship, but feel free to reach out to me <laughs> for any other reason. I'm joking, of course. Of course, you guys can reach out to me. How, how, how terrible would that be if I said the reach out to me? <laughs> I'm also a comedian, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you have a great sense of humor. And that's the next thing, you know, being stand up and seeing how you roast people in a godly manner. That's the real challenge, um, being in the club. But you guys have gotten the game. Make sure you like this. And for the listeners, which the majority of you are, if you don't do anything else, share this because sharing is love you guys game over hi everyone have you ever been curious about visiting africa which african country were you interested in kenya nigeria uganda south africa ethiopia which country are you interested in my good friend kellen cash coleman came up with a course called My First Trip to Africa that'll guide you through this process. It's only $20 and in this course you'll learn about passports, visas, vaccinations that you need before you go there, as well as a budget, uh, how much the trip is going to cost. He also talks about what you should pack, uh, what you should take with you, how you should travel on a budget. Did you know that 100 US dollars is worth a thousand South African rand and over 10,000 Kenyan shillings? So imagine what you can do with $100 back home. I say back home because I'm from Sudan, I'm African, I already know how it's like. I know that you know when you convert Canadian and American money, it goes a long way when you're traveling across Africa. So if you're curious, um, if, if Africa is a place that you've always wanted to go, always want to move there, Kellen Cash is the person to ask. Check out the course, there's a little preview you can listen to um, before you actually purchase it. If you're interested in this course, visit www.diversifiedgame.com. Don't miss out.